right, in the last video I was telling more information I found about the, the batteries physically. Uh, I want to talk about, in this video, the actual capacity and the, both power and energy that you can get uh, from these modules. Now I've uh, put them into my E30 and I'll show some videos of that. Be able to fit uh, you know, seven eighths or three quarters of a volt pack entirely in the trunk of the E30 with still room to be able to store things. Um, and uh, been driving that and very happy with the performance. The batteries don't sag very much and they can put out more, more power than, uh, than I can use with just my single uh, GE 11 inch. Uh, when I have the second motor that's installed, when I wire that up, I'll be able to use more, but still these batteries have a lot more cap capacity. Now, how do I know that? Well, the DUE actually paid uh, to do a lot of testing on these batteries. It was, testing was done by the Idaho National Laboratories. And they think it's about five volts that they've been doing periodic testing where they pull the battery out and they check for uh, the uh, capacity of the battery, uh, both from an energy standpoint and then also do, uh, interestingly enough, peak uh, pulse power tests where they do 10 second pulls for max power. Uh, not, uh, not really relevant necessarily for the volt because the volt only uses 111 kilowatts. But that testing has found that you can get up to 350 kilowatts peak out of one Chevy Volt pack. Uh, that's uh, pretty impressive. I mean, I have my A123 cells that I've built up here, and uh, I have to go back and actually compare numbers, but uh, I think the, the power capability of these is actually better than those A123 cells, at least when they're fully charged, and I'll talk more about that later. Now, um, I'll talk a little bit here about uh, just some of the general terms. Uh, but I'll actually put up the, uh, try to figure out how to put some screenshots up to actually show the graph outputs. You might be thinking, oh, this is DOE data, how are we going to, you know, how did I get access to it? Do I work on the DOE? Well, I do work on some DOE projects, but that's not how I got access to this. Uh, this is all public information. It's free. I'll post the links to the web. Uh, EERE has it on their website. You can be able to download it and uh, do it as well. It's a not super comprehensive report, but, uh, uh, they do have uh, some good graphs and some uh, documentation of what the packs are ca actually capable of. A uh, bit of uh, background, so these are, the cells are uh, LG Chem, they're uh, lithium manganese oxides. Uh, the general operating voltage is between 3 and 4.1. The nominal voltage on this is about 3.7 volts. Uh, and I'll talk about the charge discharge curve here in a bit. Um, the packs are actually 16 and a half kilowatt hours. It depends on the year. 2011, uh, they changed from 2011 to 2012 and actually made a uh, change to the batteries that improved both the, the pulse power and the capacity of the pack. Uh, and um, so, but uh, I'll, everything I'll be talking about here is for a 2013 volt. Uh, there are 288 cells. Nominally, this is 355 volts, but uh, um, depending on the state of charge and your charging, you can be going higher than that. It's all, all the, uh, they're all pouch cells in uh, three in parallel and 96 in series to get to that voltage. Uh, as I talked about in the previous videos, there are 48 volt modules and there are 24. There are six of the 48 volt modules and there's just two of those 24s. Those 24 volt modules are actually pretty handy when you're trying to uh, get that exact voltage uh, when you're running up to the, the soliton controller is 345 volts. It's just a little too under. So uh, depending on how, how much you want to use the entire pack, that, that 24 volt module can be, uh, can be a real blessing. Um, so they did, what they did for the testing is they followed three uh, or five volts through their life and they, they're, they're continuing to do this testing. And uh, they pull the battery pack out, they show a picture of their test setup and they test for capacity, uh, fully capacity. The, in the Chevy Volt, they only use, the GM only uses 10.8 kilowatts, uh, kilowatt hours of the 16 and a half kilowatt hours in the battery pack. And they do that because they wanna be able to maximize the life. And this is the reason why ERE is doing this testing, or Idaho National Laboratories, is they wanna see how the, pack, the packs are degrading over time. Right now, in the, the, the testing they've done, the fleet shows 70,000 miles. Now, it's a hard thing on the Volt is you don't know if those are all electric miles or uh, they could be all gas miles, for instance, and you could have essentially zero cycles on the battery. Uh, most Volt owners, like myself, try to use the electric electricity all the time. And, uh, you know, for me, I've got uh, 50,000 miles on my pack. 
that is uh, cycling twice a day, uh, full charge, discharge, thereabouts, and uh, uh, and that's generally, typically the way to run. Fortunately for the test day that's available, that 70,000 mile one, don't know exactly what it is, but it's probably uh, almost all exclusively uh, EV miles. Um, and so with that, they're showing a 4% loss at 70,000 miles. So that's that's pretty good. They have they have all the ones, the nearest one is things uh, uh, below that is about 63,000 miles and it has less than 4%. So it's a pretty good, you know, two, two data points can't make a trend from it, but they are at least corroborating each other. Um, and again, I'll throw the throw the link up onto it. The, the most interesting thing for me is they actually do uh, peak power testing. Now, uh, I've been reading through the different test procedures that they have. There are one for plug-in hybrids and then there's one for EVs. The, the plug-in hybrids, as near as I can read from the, the standard, there's Rev2 is the only standard that's been released. Apparently they've been doing testing to Rev3, which isn't yet released. Uh, Rev2 does an eight second pulse, but in the test reports that I'll, I'll show you the links to, uh, clearly say it's 10 second pulse. And depending on the battery, uh, the highest that they've been able to record is about 350 kilowatts. Uh, that's 466 horsepower, somewhere around there. And um, which is pretty outstanding. If, if they would have put that kind of uh, actual capability into the Volt, at least for, for short bursts, they you, know, you could have had a lot, uh, a lot different op public opinions of the the performance of the Volt. It's it's uh, sprightly as is right now, but if they would just went with double the power, at least for the short accelerations, it would have been a uh, a very different story, I think. But it is what it is, and that either way, whether the Volt uses it or not, that capacity is there, and in fact, it, it's there to protect the batteries because GM warranties these batteries for 100,000 miles, and they don't want to be paying to put new batteries in. Now, the way that the ERE actually tests it, at least the, the procedure that I've read, is they will do a start with a fully charged battery, discharge it for uh, either 10 seconds or 30 seconds, depending on the test standard, at the most, the highest power output that they can get out of it. And then they'll stop and they'll let it rest. And they'll, then they'll do it again. And then they'll stop and they'll rest. And they'll do this to achieve a C3 rate, or a C over 3 rate of a total, uh, an average discharge rate. So they're doing this ma uh, max power discharge, then rest, then max power discharge, then rest, and they're continuing to do that all the way until the battery is empty. And that's as near as I can tell from the, uh, from the I can have the rep two of the test standard, not the rep three. Um, they do the same thing for the leaf, all the, those, those links are also there as well. And I believe from the EV uh, test procedure, they do it on 30 second intervals. Um, interesting thing to find is, uh, all of them around 320 uh, kilowatts is pretty consistent, but the uh, peak capacity actually increases a little bit over time, and it's because the, the resistance, the internal resistance actually has decreased. So that 350 kilowatt number that I, uh, that I mentioned is the last test that I, they'd done, which, which was 70,000 miles on the bolt. And uh, so, you know, 70,000 miles and you're still being able to produce that power. Also, that voltage, that battery had already been tested uh, three or four times, uh, two or three times before that, doing essentially 10 second uh, max power bursts until it was completely depleted, and then put back into the car, drove like normal, pulled out, test done again, drove like normal, etc. So it's the, these aren't batteries that have been uh, treated with kid gloves. They've been actually fairly, uh, I don't want to use the word abused, but the, the uh, used well outside the regime that the GM intended. So that tells me that uh, you at least uh, have some good confidence there that you can still be able to do some high power pulls on it, obviously more more limited, but uh, you can do that and uh, not necessarily damage the batteries. I think part of that is the, the liquid cooling system and really for the for the batteries, the the current is, uh, for almost any electrical, uh, electrical component, this is an electrochemical component, but the power you can operate it is a limit of how fast you can get the heat out. And so because this has low internal resistance, you can pull a lot of power out, so you've got to pull out a lot of heat. And that's where the, the liquid cooling comes in handy. Um, let's see, what else I want to mention? Uh, oh, uh, 
charge and discharge curve. So this is lithium manganese, which is different than the lithium iron phosphates that most of the people in, uh, doing DIY conversions are, are familiar with. So the charge discharge curve for this is, is quite different. And it actually presents an interesting opportunity with the, with the volts that I'm, that I'm going to try out and we'll, we'll see how it works. Uh, I'm not going to run a BMS, but I'm also not going to balance, bottom balance. And I'll, let me explain why. So in the lithium iron phosphate, the voltage drops off very rapidly once you take off the charge. So max, when you reach max state of charge, the voltage climbs up, you hit that knee, you know you're fully charged. But then the problem runs into trying to identify your state of charge, that that voltage then remains constant until you're 90% uh, thereabouts uh, depleted. And then the voltage drops off very rapidly. This is actually, from a performance standpoint, is great because that means you have constant power. The current capability of the cells is essentially is fairly close to the same regardless of the state of charge. So it will decrease some, but not a lot. And your voltage is remaining constant, means your power is remaining mostly constant. Now, the lithium manganese, you do have this steady decline. Um, I don't want to make any parallels to, to uh, a lead acid battery, but you know you could be able to tell in the, in the old days the state of charge of a lead acid battery at rest by measuring the rested voltage. You could not do that with the lithium ion phosphate. With the manganese, at rest, with not actually doing any draws, I can look and see and, and have a pretty good approximation of what my state of charge is. Now, these are used pack modules. They have a, had a BMS on them for the ones I've gotten are all less than 20,000 miles. That BMS's job is to balance all of the cells. At, but that balancing of vo it balances voltage. But in balancing voltage at rest, it's also doing it in state of charge. I've gone through the mod uh, some of the modules and as, ne as accurately as my voltmeter can read, the cells that I have checked have been the same for the same pack, uh, meaning that they have uh, should have roughly the same state of charge. Now, so if I like, originally I was going to bottom balance all of this, but there's really no need, and there's no knee or no need. The the bottom balance, the whole point was to make sure that you knew where the state of charge was at. With this linear curve, if they're all at the same voltage, whether that voltage is here or here or here, as long as they are the same voltage. They're going to have pretty close to the same state of charge. Now, none of them are going to be exact, but when you bottom balance, you don't get the exact either. But you don't also discharge all the way down to here. You still stay well outside that well uh, that range because you don't want to get the volt cell voltages too low. So um, we'll see how this works. You know, this is all all an experiment. You know, uh, I hate wiring BMSs. I did that on the Interdell cells and. Uh, um, I also did uh, a BMS on the A123s. Uh, I only use the, on the A123s, I simply use it as a cell monitoring system, not as an active balancing, because I found that the, I was getting erroneous readings from the Lithion system. So, um, and uh, just kind of really shook my uh, confidence that I was even giving good readings out of it, not to mention the, the balancing aspect from, of it. So, uh, that's how I'm going to use it. I'll, uh, this is, I've got one pack that's going in the in the uh, or that's in the E30. I'm pulling things out. Uh, I didn't paint the steel and all that stuff, so I'm going to put it all back together. Again, I'll show a video just show, doing a walkthrough of how I installed it in the E30. And uh, but really, so far I've been, been really impressed. It took a took a bit of figuring out how I wanted to get it so I could make it manageable to fit into other cars. But the power capacity is is really great. You know, from one pack being able to have potentially roughly 300 kilowatts. Uh, oh, I mentioned before, on the lithium iron phosphate, you have that constant power. That's not the case with lithium, lithium manganese. So your voltage is decreasing. So even if you're getting the same current out of those cells, your power capacity has been decreased because your power is decreasing with the voltage, and the voltage is roughly decreasing linearly as a function of that state of charge. So the um, you won't get... 400 kilowatts, uh, or sorry, 350 or 350 kilowatts out when you're almost a dead battery. Uh, you only get that the, the state of charge, and it will decrease. I'd have to go back and look at the the chart, but you're still getting uh, in the 250 kilowatts per pack. For for me, what I'm going to be using not one but two Chevy Volt packs that are going to be wired together in parallel. I'll have to 
do balancing on that for sure, because if I just hook them up, then the current will try to equalize at very, very high rates. But when I have them together, that will give me a capacity of about 30 kilowatt hours uh, of energy capacity, and trying to keep below that 340 volt, 45 volt limit. And then from a battery standpoint, I will have, let's roughly say, 600 kilowatts um, of power available, which uh, hopefully will be sufficient for my needs.